Welcome to the Standing Up to Pots podcast, otherwise known as the Potscast. This podcast is dedicated to educating and empowering the community about postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, commonly referred to as POTS. This invisible illness impacts millions, and we are committed to explaining the basics, raising awareness, exploring the research, and empowering patients to not only survive, but thrive. This is the Standing Up to Pots podcast. Hello, fellow POTS patients and gorgeous people who care about POTS patients. I'm Jill Brook, your seriously flushed host today. I'm glad you can't see me right now. And today we have an episode of the POTS Diaries, where we get to know someone in the POTS community and hear their story. Today we are speaking with Kristen, who has kindly volunteered to share her story with us so that the rest of us might benefit. Kristen, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, no problem. I'm super happy to be here. Can we have a little introduction to Kristen, some basics about you, whatever you want us to know for some upfront info? Sure. So I am 27 from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I work at a national lab. It's kind of ironic that I was actually a tour guide for a while before the pandemic started. (laughs) I'm also not great at science, but just shows that you can do anything if you put your mind to it. (laughs) But I also coordinate proposals and outreach. I had an English degree, so I've always done more of the artsy, creative stuff. I'm actually writing a book. I'm in the middle of trying to put the finishing touches on it now. I mean, that's a little background on me. I also live with my boyfriend and dog. The dogs are great. (laughs) I agree. Wow, you have so much going on, and I'm excited to ask you about a lot of it. But first, we always make you say, what would your friends or family say about your personality? So I would say probably that they would say I'm very determined, that I always have been since a young age. I've always studied really hard for tests in school. I cried when we went on vacation. So it was like to an unhealthy point, but I didn't want to miss school. And yeah, also cried when I missed a point on a spelling test in like third grade. So I've always been a bit of a perfectionist in wanting to excel there. Again, probably creative with the writing and stuff. Also probably like eccentric at times. I really like Funko Pop. I have like 150 Funko Pops. (laughs) Are you talking yet about what your book is about or is that private till it's all done? Oh, I can talk about it. (laughs) I can give the gist. So it's kind of like a fantasy drama type thing. It's about this little girl. And when she dreams, she goes to what I'm calling a dreamscape. It has a bunch of people that have died. And when they touch her, just like a touch on the shoulder or whatever, she relives their death sequence and then they come back to life in the real world. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's kind of like a whole lore around that. And then this other girl who's kind of like her guardian. That's the gist of the book. You sound like a very busy person. So in between the schooling and the tour guiding and everything else, were you just kind of inventing the storyline in your head, building it up? Yeah. I've always been a go-getter, always pushing to my limits, which is another thing that is hard for, with POTS because you kind of want to push past your limit. But yeah. Wait, can we pause? Of course. I totally forgot the first half of the question. I did. No, I think I was actually going to just ask you about brain fog. So you want me to just do it again? Start the question over? Yeah. And then I can admit I had some brain fog. No, I think that would be great. I think that would be helpful. And also, you're such an achiever, I can tell. I think it would be amazing for people to see that you have accomplished all of this with brain fog. But anyway, I'll just start the question over. So can I ask, with coming up with this whole storyline of the book, it sounds like you were very busy. You were in school, you were a tour guide, you were doing all this stuff. Did you just invent this whole storyline of your book as you were working? What was that process like? I don't know. I kind of was just sitting in class one day, my math class, so my less creative class. (laughs) My mind started to wander. Yeah, and I kind of just came up with this idea, and then I kept building off of it. And I went a little off my friends as well and, you know, got their input. So that was pretty valuable. And I kind of just let it come to me as I started writing it. Okay, so obviously you are an amazing achiever. 
Can you talk to us about what was your first sign that anything was amiss with your health? So there's kind of like different phases of my health. So when I was really young, I was 12 years old, I got diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, which is an autoimmune disease. For those that don't know, it's like when your immune system attacks your colon, basically ended up with a bunch of bloody diarrhea. That's what it is. So I lost a lot of blood. I was in the hospital for a little bit and my hemoglobin was down to like five, which is super low. I had to get some transfusions. I mean, the fatigue really started there, but <laughs> um, that would later be expanded upon with POTS. And then another thing I should mention is I get brain fog all the time. <laughs> so you could be a high achiever and still get brain fog and I forget what I'm saying mid-sentence. But anyway, okay, so back to the ulcerative colitis. But the thing about that is that it got under control like pretty quickly. And in hindsight, I feel like it definitely got under control quickly when I've been dealing with POTS because, I mean, they just put me on a medicine and I was, I was pretty fine. Maybe took like a year or something to really stabilize after that. But I really don't have flare-ups where I get all those symptoms again, unless I'm off the medicine, which has happened like a few times. But other than that, I can like forget about it, <laughs> which I wish could happen with POTS. <laughs> so then after that, you know, I mean, it was pretty stable. And then it just seems like around high school or college, I started to get just really fatigued all the time. No matter how much I slept, I just didn't wake up refreshed. I didn't know what was wrong with me. I didn't think there was something seriously wrong. I'm just like, why don't I have energy? I don't get it. Like, what am I doing wrong? I'm trying to sleep. I tried all kinds of energy stuff, but I just never could get any energy. And yeah, that's when like the brain fog started. I would just lose track of my thoughts. And looking back on it now, there are times where I definitely like went to lie down and then I would feel better. I didn't think about that at the time, but I definitely did that all the time. Like I would have like favorite napping spots in the Cathedral of Learning for the University of Pittsburgh. Anyone who's familiar with that school, it's like the big building. Yeah, fatigue was the worst and brain fog. And then things started to get really bad whenever I got prescribed this medicine called Canassa for my ulcerative colitis. So I think I had a really bad allergic reaction to it. And I'm pretty sure it's what tipped off the POTS because I know a lot of POTS comes on from virus infections and stuff, but an allergic reaction is also like with your immune system. So I think that that could possibly be it. I wasn't on this medicine for very long. What really came from that, the first sign was the tinnitus. I've seen a correlation with POTS. Mm -hmm. You're ringing in the ears yeah. for anybody who doesn't know that. So it really came on ringing. <laughs> I'm like, where's that sound coming from? And then I just checked like, every room of the house. And then finally, I made it all quiet. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, it's coming from inside my head. <laughs> yeah. It's like in the terror movie, the horror movie, when the voice is coming from within the house. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and I told my doctor about it. And it was right around New Year's. And she's like, wow, you really rang in the new year, didn't you? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was also getting a really bad rash. It was a suppository, so it's right where it would be on the skin, like on my stomach, though. But I got so dizzy and vertigo all the time, just standing up or eating. The fatigue got so much worse, and I just felt like I needed to pass out all the time. The precinct could be feeling as I know it today. And then it just started getting worse because I didn't know what it was. So I kept taking the medicine and the tinnitus was most bothersome at the time because it was so loud. Like I would be in a silent room and it would sound like there were fire engines rushing past me. Oh, wow. Yeah, I could not get rid of it. And finally, I got off the medicine and that went down, but it's like 4% what it once was. So like I still have tinnitus, but it's not as bad. None of my other symptoms really ever went away, though. I was still always fatigued, and I started noticing that I really just could not eat food very well anymore. Because what would happen? Pretty much everything I ate would give me some kind of reaction, but it would depend on the food. So if I ate a lot of carbs, I would get really pre-syncope, you know, feeling like I needed to pass out. I've never like actually passed out, but yeah, I just <laughs> feel like I need to multiple times a day. Before I had any idea what POTS was or what was wrong with me, I would tell my friends, like, there's just not enough blood getting to my brain. 
Oh, so you knew it. You called it, even though he couldn't. <laughs> yeah, and I had no idea why. I just didn't know how to describe the feeling. <laughs> like, it's just not its just not getting to my brain. And they're like, are you sure? Do you have evidence to back this off? Because it sounded crazy. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a seemingly healthy-looking young girl, but I have all these weird symptoms. So, I mean, there was a little bit of a time where I'm like, is this all in my head? Well, I was just wondering how long it took you to get a diagnosis. Like, how long were you going through all of these symptoms, wondering what the heck was up? long, long time, probably six years about when it was really bad. So I just got diagnosed two months ago. Yeah, this has been such a, a hard struggle for me for years. Yeah, I feel like am I supposed to say congratulations, or I'm sorry, like I, I'm guessing you're very happy to have an answer. Congratulations, for sure. But I get what you're saying. I was so happy because I had suspected it for a while. I can talk about how I first suspected POTS. Yeah, what was it? It's great these days with Reddit and all of the other forums that you can just go online, you know, because I did so much research just trying to figure out what the heck was wrong with me because no doctors could tell me, that was for sure, because I asked all of them and they just had no answers for me. The blood tests always came back fine. So yeah, I found the pot subreddit and I was just like looking at all the memes. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so me. This is so me. And I remember one specific comment someone made about it. all the time throughout the day, I have to go to my car to lie down just because I can't be upright anymore. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's me like three times a day. So yeah, that's when I really started to think that it was pots. Wow. And at the time, were you a tour guide? Because the minute you said tour guide, I imagined somebody who has to spend a lot of time on their feet thinking. Yeah. So <laughs> I was on tours probably on average like two or three times a week and they'd be like an hour. It wasn't too bad, but some days were really bad when there was a lot of tours and I'd have to be on my feet for like six hours a day. And that got really bad because there's some walking and then it's a bunch of standing. And when I stand, I don't really stand still. <laughs> and I've done this forever. But I, I think maybe subconsciously I was trying to help with my symptoms. But I'm always moving around, moving my feet, not really just standing still in place. So I would do that behind everyone so they couldn't see me. I should say for tour guides, so at a national lab, I lead them place to place. But then the researchers do the talking. So then I can just kind of hide in the back and no one looks at me until I take them to the next stop. <laughs> So yeah, my blood pressure would get really low a lot of the time and it got hard for sure. Yeah. So I think before we started recording, you had mentioned about having to sneak off and lay down in a bunch of different places. Can you talk about that? So at work, I would go to my car or the women's restroom had like a locker room off to the side. People could go in and out of the bathroom and they wouldn't go to the locker room they wouldn't notice me at all, basically. And it was close to my office. So I would just go there to lie down and put my feet up on the wall. And again, this is all before I knew I had POTS. I just knew that like I couldn't function until I did this for 15 minutes. And then like I'd go back and try to be okay. No one ever found me back there except for one time. This one lady came back and she kind of like jumped back and she did not expect to see someone just lying there. And I was like, it's a long story. I just have to lie here for like 10 to 15 minutes. And she's like, it's, it's fine. And she was, <laughs> she was sort of walking away. Yeah. Okay. So you were dealing with ulcerative colitis and then you were dealing with POTS. And then you were mentioning all of these different reactions you were having to foods and things. What's your next suspicion? You had mentioned a doctor's appointment tomorrow. So I think I might also have mast cell activation syndrome because I've, I've always reacted to like a lot of things. I feel like if you put me in a bubble, I might be okay. I can sometimes get my body to function normally and that's great. I know a lot of people with POTS, they struggle with that at all. And yeah, I can function pretty great, but the smallest thing will just make me spiral. <laughs> so one funny story, like I've always reacted badly to scents. So I shared an office with this guy. So where I work, it's like two to three to an office. So it was just me and him in a closed door environment, this little space. And he wore the heaviest cologne you can imagine. 
everyone around him, you know, was like giving him looks and, you know, they would talk about it elsewhere. But like for me, it was a nightmare of being in there and not just because I couldn't stand the smell. I started coughing really bad. I sounded like I was coughing, like I had been smoking for 20 years. It was that bad. (laughs) It started around him, but it then just became a part of my life like every day. For six weeks, I had to get on a steroid medicine to make it go down because I think, I don't know, my lungs were inflaming or something. It wasn't contagious because I never got anyone else sick. But yeah, I'm like, I'm allergic to my office mate. You have to get me out of there. And they did. (laughs) Oh, good. And then another thing I mentioned about that cough is I've gotten it three times. And the other two times is when I was just super emotional. I was like emotionally triggered. I cried a little too hard for my body to handle, I guess. (laughs) Well, that's interesting. They know that stress can be a mast cell trigger. So that's going to be interesting. I hope you get good answers tomorrow on that. Yeah, thanks. I mean, I know you won't get answers tomorrow. It'll, like everything, take probably too long to figure it out. Yeah, exactly. And you need to have a good doctor. I have some doctor stories as well. So I have a great cardiologist now that diagnosed me with POTS. But before that, you know, when I was still trying to figure stuff out, I went to this neurologist and I did not have a good experience there. As soon as I got there, the nurses, when they found out that they would have to do a standing test for POTS, they got annoyed and started rolling their eyes. It was so rude. They didn't know what to do. They like took my heart rate and blood pressure when I wasn't even completely supine. And then they stood me up and I took it after like two to three minutes. And during this time, they started arguing with each other on how you actually do the standing test. Oh, no. So it was just a complete mess. And then the doctors, he tried to prescribe me anxiety meds. And then my PCP had messaged them because she believed me. So I have a great PCP message them, like hoping me to start me on like a POTS medicine early, thinking it would help me. And then the PA that saw me was like, oh, yeah, I saw that and I didn't know how to respond. So I just ignored it and forgot about it. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. Not a great doctor experience there. Since you did get your POTS diagnosis, have you been able to figure out things that have made you better? Like, was an explanation helpful for you in some way or another? Yeah. They put me on Midadrin, which really helped. So they started me on Florinef first, and that didn't help. But getting prescribed the Midadrin has definitely helped me, and I'm able to like tolerate some meals better. But since it took me so long to get a diagnosis, I was doctoring myself, you know, just doing self-experiments, trying to see what worked for a really long time. So I already have my own regimen, <laughs> to be honest. That really helped me. Do you have any stories of bizarre self-experiments or really helpful self-experiments? I think a lot of us go through that period where you're just trying anything to feel better. Like, is there anything that stands out as either really working or being really funny? I'm a big supplement person. My dad was into it when I was little. I carrying around all these supplements, going to all these natural stores. But I mean, they became my best friend when I was just trying to heal myself. My favorites are licorice because that helps raise your blood pressure. Salt, of course. I have potassium salt stick. It helps you tolerate salt really well for anyone who hasn't tried that yet. Because I tried a couple other brands and I would get nauseous. And then turmeric, that helps. I think it helps with inflammation or something. So like, these are some of my favorites. Oh, also with caffeine, because I know some people can handle that better than others. I think it both really helps me and really hurts me. Right after a meal, especially, it can help get like blood back to your brain and things like that. But then I get the worst crash because I'm dehydrated or something. So I have 100 milligram caffeine pills and I cut them. So I get about 75 milligrams because I feel like that's my perfect. Uh, that's your perfect spot. Yeah. So that's kind of crazy. But anyway, then the funny thing is I would bring the whole tote bag of pills to work with me because I wouldn't know what I would need that day. I kind of just, you know, took it as it came, whatever symptom I got. I'm like, oh, okay, I need to pass out. I should take some licorice or I have lots of brain fog. I think maybe turmeric and also some licorice (laughs) would help with that. And then one of my friends there started calling it my small to mid-sized pharmacy that I would carry around with me. (laughs) (laughs) Whatever it takes, right? Yeah, right. 
What lifestyle things have helped you? I know you mentioned the pandemic actually was good for you lifestyle wise. Yeah. So again, this was before I really knew I had POTS when the pandemic started, but I definitely did. And really the greatest thing that happened to me, the first thing I thought was, oh, I don't have to like run out to my car anymore or to the ladies restroom. Like I can just lie down on the couch whenever I feel like I need to pass out because it's just hard for me to just sit all day. I'm sure you know, <laughs> and the people listening, I just can't do it. Like even if I'm sitting too long, I guess that that get some blood pooling too. So actually I have like a new kind of work situation. So I still sit up when I can because I'm trying to get not too deconditioned, but I got a laptop instead of a computer. So now I can lay on my couch and I have a monitor that I set up on this little end table that I made so that I could have two screens. So I pull the end table over and get my laptop on my lap and hook up to the monitor so I can like have this lay down desk. It's great. Genius. Yes, thanks. Work has been good. So actually the only other person that I know of with POTS is my boss's son. Wow. So my boss is very understanding of everything that I have to go through. That's excellent. Well, I was going to ask, what is the best type of support that friends or family can give you these days to help you live with this? Sure, yeah. First, you know, just believing me, which I never really struggled with too much, but I think we all kind of got that a little bit. You know, you're crazy. What do you mean? There's no blood getting to your brain. So yeah, that helps. And also just understanding if I can't just sit up anymore at the restaurant, I have to go lie down and kind of just letting me excuse myself or things like that, which they've been great with. Usually my boyfriend and I will watch a show over dinner or something. And then all of a sudden I can't sit up anymore. I can't even focus lying down. Like I have to focus on getting the blood back to my brain, as I say, and just kind of like close my eyes. And I can feel it move back to my brain, by the way. Interesting. What does it feel like? It just feels like it's going back. I don't know. It's so weird. It's like the same way I didn't know what the feeling was, except that there was no blood getting back to my brain. That's how it feels going. Wait, sorry. Brain fog. I'm going to start over. So the same way that I said that I couldn't, I didn't know what it was except for, oh my gosh, I just need, okay. Yeah, no trouble. And in fact, I don't even try to sit up while I do this podcast. I lay on my stomach for yeah. this very reason. I super understand. If you feel like... If I need to move, probably. Yeah, if you need to move, take a break <laughs> or find a different down. position, whatever you need to do. By the way, hopefully I'm not rambling too much. I tend to do that. No, not at all. And you know, you can tell me how much of this you want cut out of the podcast or not. The people who like talking about their POTS journey the most are the people who have already come through the toughest part and, you know, the battle days are mostly over. And I always worry that the people at home need to hear more from people who are still in the thick of it and still dealing with the hard parts. And so I'm always encouraging people to at least consider sharing the imperfections as much as they feel comfortable, because I think that's what people might actually relate to the most. Sure. As much as works for the podcast, because <laughs> you probably don't want the whole thing me stumbling over my words. But <laughs> so are you laying down now? Yeah, I moved. All right. We're face to face, both laying on our stomachs. This is cool. Like, I've never actually talked to someone else with POTS, except on the internet. I don't know where they're all <laughs> hiding here, but I mean, I think it's super undiagnosed, really. I'll just go back into saying what I was going to say. So when I'm finished eating, I usually get a lot of bad symptoms and I need to go lie down. And I'll tell him, oh, I need just like 10 minutes. Can we pause the show? And he'll go, we're not turning it back on for 15 minutes because he knows that like I need that extra time. Oh, yay. Yeah. And <laughs> a lot of the times, especially in the beginning, I've gotten way better at it. But I was, wasn't giving myself the time. And I just didn't want to admit to myself that there was something really wrong. Like I just wanted to push through it. So it's always been hard for me because I, I don't know, I felt like I was giving up or something. Even if I'm like, I have to take a 15 minute break because I can't function anymore. I'm like, but why not? I should be able to just keep writing or keep working. 
So I've gotten a lot better at realizing that's just not possible all the time and to give myself those breaks instead of just suffering. That's great. Can I ask, what gives you the strength to deal with all this? Like, do you have any coping mechanisms or anything like that? So I think a lot of it is just this light at the end of the tunnel mentality. I kind of just want it to all be better one day. I keep looking for a miracle solution. You know, and like I said, especially since I had that experience with my ulcerative colitis where it kind of just was managed perfectly with the medicine. I'm like, okay, I just need to find my POTS medicine and I'll be fine. And I don't know if that's really possible, but I still have hope and I'm definitely getting better all the time. You know, every little thing that I try and just one step closer to really feeling better. So there's that. Also, I just research a lot of the time to try to heal myself. It's kind of cathartic in a way, and it helps me find out new things. Like I've read so many scientific articles. Like I said, I was never a science person before this, but I know so much about a blood flow and POTS and autoimmune conditions. And I go to the doctor's office so prepared. So that's why it hurt even more when they just dismissed me because I'm like, I know I don't have a, a PhD, but I feel what's in my body. And trust me, I'm putting in the time (laughs) trying to figure it out. Right. Yeah. And I can relate. It sort of seems like the one silver lining to some of this is it's so fascinating, right? Like autoimmunity is fascinating and blood flow is fascinating. And so at least as you're sitting there trying to solve your own mystery, it's it's very enriching. (laughs) Yeah, I'm very interested in it now. And even with other people's health problems. I try to diagnose them now. Like it's become some kind of weird hobby. I'm just always telling them to try new things or I'll like, I'll do a little Google searching on their behalf or something. Right. Well, so what are your favorite activities or hobbies these days? What are things that really work for you? So I still like to write and video games I've always loved. I think someone else that was on here once mentioned Animal Crossing. I also love Animal Crossing. She said it's just a simple game. I've never been one to be good at games that require a lot of fast thinking, and probably a lot of that has to do with the pots. But I like my take turn games, as my boyfriend says. (laughs) They're literally like, okay, you can do your move now, and then it's the other person's turn, even though they're like fighting games, I say with air quotes, or just like board games. So yeah, anything that gives my brain time to think. I love reading, which probably makes sense with the writing. Netflix, of course, things like that. I love true crime docs and reality shows. Is there anything that you know now about living with POTS that you wish you had known sooner? Yeah. I mean, I would say what I said before about just kind of like giving myself permission to not be okay instead of just pushing through it. I think I could have saved myself lots of pain and misery when I could have just taken a break or done something else that I felt better doing. I don't know. At the time, that didn't even cross my mind, basically. I'm like, I don't know. Is there really something wrong with me? I don't know. I just have to keep pushing. I have to keep being a normal person. All these other people are sitting up after a meal. Why can't I? Why can't I take a shower and just go about my life? Yeah, that's really all I ever wanted was to just like do an activity that causes me pain and I feel like I'm going to pass out and then just go about my life. But no, I like always feel like I'm going to pass out. (laughs) I totally got distracted again. I get distracted a lot. That's okay. Has anything at all positive come from having POTS? Uh, Well, I found the new hobby of researching and trying to cure myself, (laughs) which I don't think I would have found otherwise. I mean, it's a stretch. I wish I didn't have POTS. And then there's another part of me that just realizes I can like overcome a lot now because living with a chronic illness, it's just there every day. And you just, you like have to find new ways to do things. I don't know. I wouldn't really push myself if I didn't have this, but it's gotten to a point where it's been so long. Like I really don't even really remember what life was like before. (laughs) Yeah. Are you up for a slightly fun speed round where we challenge your poor circulation deprived brain? Sure. Okay. What is your favorite way to get salt? I would say the salt stick vitassium thing again. 
What is the drink that you find the most hydrating? I really just drink water 24-7. Lots of water. I have a big 40-ounce bottle that I keep filling up just throughout the day. So water. (laughs) What is your favorite time of the day and why? Oh, night for sure, because my brain just works better. I think a lot of people with POTS are like that, that I've read about, but it's definitely true for me. In the morning, getting out of bed is just the hardest. Like, I can't stand at all without my heart beating out of my chest and being so short of breath. How many doctors have you seen for POTS or related conditions? Just trying to figure out what was wrong with me. I don't know, probably 20. How many other POTS patients have you ever met face-to-face in person? Yeah, none, except for you if this counts virtually. (laughs) Through a screen. Yeah. (laughs) What is one word that describes what it's like living with chronic illness? Exhausting. (laughs) Oh, good one. What is a piece of good advice that anyone ever gave you about anything at all? So I'm going to steal one from Nike. I always like the just do it because, I don't know, I feel like I spent a part of my life just saying like, oh, tomorrow I'll do this or stuff like that. But then one day I just started doing it now and like I've gotten a lot from that. That's how I wrote my book. I didn't have the, oh, I'll do it one day mentality. I mean, trying to cure myself was a feat or diagnose myself. The doctors were really not helpful most of the time. Like, I don't know if I ever would have been diagnosed if I didn't just do it. I'm just trying to do all I could, find answers. Oh, I love that. That's so cool. Okay. What is something small or something cheap that brings you comfort or joy? Funko Pops. Okay, I'm really embarrassed. I have to ask, what are Funko Pops? So a Funko Pop is basically just little characters from pop culture. For example, just looking at the ones that I have in my room, I have Mushu from Mulan. A lot of people probably know that. I have the Chester Cheeto from the Cheetos. (laughs) Those are adorable. (laughs) Alice from Alice in Wonderland. I have like Pikachu from Pokemon. I've always been like a big pop culture nerd, and I also just love cute little things. And they're only like 10 bucks a Funko Pop, so they meet the criteria for sure of small and cheap. But when you get 150, probably less cheap. (laughs) (laughs) That's perfect. Thank you. Who is someone you admire or someone who inspires you? I will say Bob Ross. (laughs) The painter? Yes, the painter. I actually love him. It was just him for Halloween, but (laughs) (laughs) he has great quotes and they're so happy. You know, I think his most famous one is, we don't make mistakes. We just have happy accidents. I love that. Yeah. And there's another one I really like. It's like, ever make a mistake in life? Let's make them birds. Yeah. They're birds now. (laughs) (laughs) If you think about it. Literally a painting, you can just make a little oopsie into like a bird, but you could just do that in real life and then all your problems fly away and they're not all that easy, but I still like Bob. Oh my gosh. I think you just turned me into a fan. I'm going to have to check out him more. Have you never seen his quotes? He has like a (laughs) hundred. That's so cool. What is something that you are proud of? Probably finishing the book. I mean, I haven't published it yet, but I still took a lot of time to sit down and and write it and rewrite it a couple of times. Does it have a title yet? Yeah, I call it The Dreamer. And then I want to add another one. Probably diagnosing myself (laughs) would be another thing that I'm proud of because like I said, the doctors really didn't help much. I mean, I finally found a good one that could give me a tilt table test and do it, but most of that was all me just researching on the internet. (laughs) Yeah, that is a huge accomplishment. What is the toughest thing about POTS? Probably just uh, that we live in an upright world and our bodies don't function like that. People don't realize that, but you're expected to sit in a chair or stand in a line. And there's just not always that opportunity to get away. What is something you're looking forward to? So there's nothing really specific that I'm looking forward to. I've always been kind of like a live in the moment kind of person. 
I mean, pretty much every day can excite me. I have this big, long list of things that I want to do, games I want to play and shows I want to watch. So there's nothing in particular that I'm looking forward to at the moment, but just living another day. That's great. Okay. What is something that you are grateful for? So I am grateful. I mean, my boyfriend's super supportive of everything that I do and he understands and he has his own issues to deal with too. Like he has a lot of like breathing problems um, and anxiety. So I'm really grateful that we could be there for each other. And we're really not the healthiest batch of 20 something year olds, but we're getting by. <laughs> that sounds so nice. Okay. Last speed round question. Can you finish this sentence? People might suspect I'm a potsy when... I have to excuse myself from social situations to go lie down. <laughs> yep. I can relate to that. I feel like I have spent a lot of time laying in cars while other people finished their dinners. Yes, <laughs> me too. it sounds like you have to. <laughs> uh, yeah. My car is my go-to place because it's always there. I get worried if I'm not going to be able to get to my car. But just in recent years, I've just cared less and less. Like the last wedding I was at, I still went to the car after <laughs> after the dinner. And it was my boyfriend's cousin. So he was understanding. <laughs> we just took a break and walked off. That's good. So I just have a couple more questions. What do you wish more people knew about POTS? Definitely, I wish they knew it existed. <laughs> because, I mean, that's really the biggest hurdle to get by. Oh, wait, I have something else I wanted to say. I'll try to weave it into this. Okay, so I wish that more people knew it existed. I actually just went to get a new car recently, which was super exciting. But the guy that I was talking to that was helping me finance the car, you know, we were there for a while. So we got to talking and I mentioned POTS and I started describing it. And he was like, I think my wife has that. And then he started to say, yeah, like when she gets out of the shower, her feet are beat red. And I had just told him that's what mine looked like because of all the blood pooling and the feet. And he said that she can't drink alcohol without getting the worst hangovers. And yeah, that's me too. So I was like, yeah, you should definitely tell her to get that checked out because it's just so undiagnosed that hopefully I helped her out and that she can get it. Because it sounds like she had like a sinus infection about a year ago and that she's been having these symptoms ever since. Wow, you might have saved her from going to like 20 doctors like you had to. I sure hope so. He should have given you that car. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Oh my gosh. I know you mentioned that you've never met another POTS patient face to face in person. There's probably a few thousand POTS patients listening right now. Is there anything you'd want to say to them? Yeah, I mean, just don't give up, especially if you're one of the many that are still undiagnosed. Just keep pushing for new doctors because there are ones that will listen to you keep researching on the internet. I'm guessing we're not the only ones who do that because, you know, you can feel better. It's not just so hopeless that there's nothing you can do. Like it's hard to live with, but there are many little life hacks. Like I never go anywhere without my compression stockings now. You know, that's something simple that you don't even need a diagnosis for. You could just get online. But yeah, just keep trying. Last question. Why did you agree to let us share your story today? Well, it's always good to get your story out there, and I hope that I can help other POTS patients like I did with the guy who financed my car's wife. And it just really needs more awareness. We shouldn't all have to suffer for years just because doctors don't know what it is. I think this podcast is really great. I've been listening pretty much since the beginning. I've heard all the episodes now, but yeah, you're just doing a great job really getting out just the awareness of POTS, which is what we need. Well, Kristen, thank you so much for your kind words, and thank you for sharing your story and your insights with us. I have to thank you personally, because when we started this, I was kind of in the middle of a scary mast cell reaction, and I didn't know which way it was going to go. And I think talking to you helped me. <laughs> so Good. Thank Whatever you helps. for that, too. <laughs> but we all really appreciate you, and I know everybody listening wishes you the best going forward. All right. Thank you.
Hey, listeners, remember, this is never medical advice, dental advice, spiritual, relationship, fashion, menu advice, any kind of advice. Consult your medical team about what's right for you. Please consider subscribing because it helps us get found by more people like you. And we really like people like you. So thank you for listening. Remember, you're not alone. And please join us again soon. You can find us wherever you get your podcasts or on our website, www.standinguptopots.org slash podcast. And I would add, if you have any ideas or topics you'd like to suggest, send them in. You can also engage with us on social media at the handle Standing Up to Pots. Thanks for listening, and we hope you join us. This show is a production of Standing Up to Pots.